Hey guys, welcome to Step by Step Real Science Tutorial. So today we are in part 17, selecting threshold value for anomaly detection. In last video, we did a visualization and found out that my core data lies within the yellow region, as you can see in this figure. So my core data lies within the yellow region and anything outside the yellow region is my anomalies. So now what we need to do is we need to see like we need to select a particular point and see whether my data that lies outside the core data is anomaly or not. So we need to set a threshold so that I can say that anything beyond my threshold is my anomaly or outlier. So here is the process of setting this threshold. So first one is we should have some anomalies and non-anomalies data like we need to have some labeled data so that we can see where, whether we have anomalies or not. So for example, in this uh, end data set, I have validation data set here. So I have 298 normal data and nine are my anomalies. So this is my labeled data. So we need to have some labeled data that shows that in some amount have normal data and a very, very few amount have anomalies so in such cases we we need to have such data so first step is fulfilled and then second step is is to evaluate through the true positive false negative and true negative value and then calculate precision recall and finally we calculate f1 score so if my f1 score is less than the threshold value that we get then we identify that my data is anomaly. So these are my outliers. If it's greater than the threshold value, then we say that my data is normal. So before applying this is uh, process steps, I would like to have a quick recap on what is precision, recall, true positive, false positive, and so on. So how to? So we need to use precision and recall to evaluate the model. Okay, so if my actual value and predicted value is both this both equal, then this is my this is the case of of true positive. So whatever I have predicted, actual values are both same, right? That is my true positive. Then again, so whatever my value whatever I predicted and whatever the actual value is zero, zero. That means this is my false, true, negative. So this is my true negative. True, negative. So if my actual value is zero and the prediction is one, then this is false positive. And if my actual value is one, but my prediction is zero, then this is false negative. Okay. So what does precision means is if for all, suppose for example, for all computer server, where we predict y as one, like actually it's the computer server is, is not anomalous. Then what we say, what fraction actually are an anomalous? So this formula, if we use, this means uh, true positive divided by, so total number of predicted value positive. That is my true positive plus false, false positive. So this one, this, this row, this highlighted row is my, my predicted bell. Likewise, likewise in recall, so what fraction we actually detect our anomalies, this recall says, and the formula is true positive divided by actual number of positive value which means true positive divided by actual positive. So actual positive is this, right? 
which means true positive plus false negative so first we calculate precision and recall so in to recap precision says what fraction actually are anomalous and recall says that what fraction we actually detect as anomalous so what fraction we have actually detected and what's actually are that's that's what the precision and recall means then finally if we have a precision and recall for example if for one algorithm, we have precision like 0 0.5, another have 0 0.4, and another algorithm, we have 0 0.7, 0 0.1. So which one is good? Which one is best once we have precision and recall? For that, we calculate F1 score. So F1 score compares precision and recall, and it gives us the best value, right? So if I use this formula, then here we can see my algorithm one is is the best because it has highest number of highest F1 score, which is 0 0.44. Okay, so if my precision is zero and and recall is also zero, then my F score will be zero divided by zero. It will be zero. So if my precision is one and recall is one, then what would be my F score? So two times one divided by two. So this will also be equals to one. That's why we have two here. So that so that one plus one will be two and we can divide it by two here. So my F1 score lies between zero and one. So zero and one. So whatever the maximum value we get between zero and one will be my best algorithm, will be my best value, will be best F1 score. So keeping this in mind, so my second second step would be a to calculate f1 score right and then if if the f1 score if the, it, it is if it is less than the threshold value that we get from f1 score the f1 score that has highest value will be my threshold value so highest value will be my threshold value if it is less than the highest value then we will consider this as, as anomaly if it is greater than or equals to highest value then we consider it as normal now let's implement this so for that what we will be doing is so i i have we have calculated uh, the p value here so this is the p value so what we need to do now is so So this is my p-value. So we'll define one select threshold and I will pass p-value comma my mm, the validation data set. So because this is where we have labeled data. So we will pass p-value comma Why? Let's say call this as p value, and then what we will do is we will initiate first my best epsilon best threshold as zero and best f1 score is also zero. So my my step size will be so I will start with my step size and I will take the max and min of of my p value so i will take max minus min of my, so that so so that i can iterate through a loop that's why i'm doing min and max and my epsilon range let's say i have set to epsilon range Range and it's pval dot mean comma pval dot max my step size so for pi range. 
Operation. Okay. So it should be my p value should be less than threshold value, which is less than API. Right. And then we don't just to resave this to new access. And what would be my true positive? So true project true positive will be. So whatever my actual value, so actual if my actual value is equals to equals to one and whole predicted value is equals to equals to one, then this is my true positive. And I'll take n bit of sum. Right? So what is my false positive? So in false positive. First positive is actually actual value is zero, but my predicted value is one. Okay. So the actual value L is here. So actual value y value is zero, but predicted value is equals to one. That is my false positive. And what is my false negative? False negative is. actual value is one but my my actual value is one but my prediction is zero prediction is zero then that is my false negative now what we do is we calculate precision precision will be equals to true positive true positive divided by False positive plus true positive plus false positive. My recall true positive divided by true positive plus false negative false negative now we need to take the best value right so if then we need to calculate first f1 score sorry so my f score is two times f score is, is two times precision times recall divide by precision plus recall precision plus recall okay now if my f score is greater than then best value then my best value will be best of f1 score and the best one f1 score will be equals to F score and list of uh, salin will be equals to sub -salin. Now we will return F1 score, comma, list of salin. Now let's Pass my F one comma silent here so P file. So this would be the also P validation because we are taking on the basis of validation data set. So this is also P file. Let's take my best tip size and print. Sorry. 
Here we can see my best of silent and type score. Now let's visualize this information. So now we know whatever what will be my outlier. So outlier will be if my P is less than silent, right? So we have completed the second step. Second step and third step is to check if my if it is less than of silent then it is anomalous otherwise not so if it is less than anomalous if my p is less than silent so if we check out layer Let's include a non zero. So these are my index for outlier. Now let's plot this uh, with this PLD dot scatter. Next bracket index is my outlier. Comma zero. Comma one. Curve will be equals to four. Face color, skip this as one. This is color is as three, and let's increase the size to eighty. So I will call this visualization. here we can see all the highlighted one in red circle are my anomalies so this is the way we look to identify anomalies in my data and this is the visualization of of my anomalies so my best threshold value is is this so anything that is less than this value will be my outlier Absolute value will be my outlier. So, this is the visualization of checking the outlier. So, hope you learned something and please like and subscribe my channel and encourage me to create more videos. Thank you so much.